here in Hotel Covington. Well, technically north by Hotel Covington. They're attached, but how nice is this room? I like it here. I like it a lot, yeah. And the restaurant downstairs is definitely like, yeah, I mean, it may be a little bit more expensive, but I think if you were to book a hotel in Cincinnati, it would probably be roughly the same. And the restaurant downstairs is great. They have the new knowledge bar. Mm -hmm. um, we'll check that out later. Yeah, and they sell bottles and stuff in the gift shop, which is cool. They have their own picks. Technically, that's a stop on our hunt. Technically. I'm a small one. A small stop. And there's gonna be a few like that, where it's places that uh, might be catered more towards um, like experiences. Pours or experiences, pours. but then they also sell bottles. Yeah. So we will count those, but don't worry, we're also hit the traditional mm. just. Um, the liquor stores. Liquor you know. stores. You know, this room has an eight ball. I think we should ask it how our hunt's gonna go. Okay. And then hold it to it. Dear Magic Eight Ball, are we gonna have a successful bourbon hunt? Better not tell you now. <laughs> Better not tell you now. How ominous. Can you tell us later? <laughs> All right, fine. I guess we're just gonna have to find out. It's up in the air. Let's get to it. Before we hit the road, Sarah laid out our plan of attack. Luckily, the Beeline, also known as the Bourbon Line, provides a map of distilleries, bars, and restaurants that are Beeline approved. But the liquor stores, however, we selected and added based on our route. Let's check out Hotel Covington's gift shop selection before we head out. They had private barrel picks from Elijah Craig, New Riff, Four Roses, Jefferson's Reserve, Three Cord, and their own Wenzel Whiskey Blend. But since we're staying here, we can always pick one of these up later in the weekend if we don't blow our budget. Our first store stop was Covington Market and Liquor. This place reminded us a little bit of the stores in Washington, D.C. that just had any and everything that you wanted. But this was on a smaller scale, and naturally, it was for a price. But I wonder if they have any buffalo trays. Hmm. Why does it always rain? I know. Well, not always, but it's raining now when we, when we go Maybe hunting. Maybe it's good luck? Like, you <laughs> know how they say, like, if it rains on your wedding day, I wonder guess it's good so. Luck. Isn't that ironic? Uh, <laughs> more buffalo trace and Sazerac rye and maybe even Henry McKenna and Bob and Bond than I've ever seen in, in one, one place location. before. Now, uh, the buffalo trace was priced normally, but the others, and the Sazerac rye was priced normally, but the others were... What? The others were marked up, as you would expect. Um, they had a lot of stuff. To kind of give you a baseline, Blanton's was 200. Yeah. The, the Stag, Stag Junior, formerly Junior, Stag, 250. Uh, 250. Ooh, they wanted uh, 699 for that E.H. Uh, e. Taylor barrel proof. It uh, was Daddy Stag was 900, 900. which is what? more than in our Lexington hunt here recently, our most yeah. recent hunt. Close to Cincinnati, I guess, different market. Different market. I didn't love how they didn't have a whole lot of price tags on There even, were not many price even tags. Even the regular bottles. So you did have to ask. Yeah. But we had a nice chat with the guy who it was, was working and Very he was nice great. Guy. Very nice guy. So. The next stop was Revival Vintage Spirits, which was such a great time. They do sell some modern bottles and they have their own single barrel picks, but mostly this is a bourbon history museum where you can buy the art. They even had a wild turkey bowling ball that I hope Chad didn't see. I filmed this part, of course I saw it. Well, thank you for resisting then. One of their oldest bottles was a six-year bourbon from 1904, which means the whiskey was distilled in the 1800s. The label was all handwritten and falling off, so that's why you see it taped to the bottle. We'll let you take a look around before we get to the pours we had at their bar. And while you look, here's a story from Jason that sums up the store's philosophy. An older gentleman came in with a tote of like 16 bottles, and most of them were like scotches and liqueurs, which aren't that desirable for us, but we'll buy everything just to get it. This guy came in, he said his elderly neighbor uh, was getting ready to pass on and she wanted to go on a cruise for her first time, and she's just selling off stuff. So he comes in and Brad was taking stuff out, and he's like, ah, scotch, scotch. Well, then he finds an old granddad from like I think it was 1979 in a box. He's like, so you're gonna get $500 for that. <laughs> and this guy's jaw hit the floor. And so at the end of it, this guy walked out with like 1500 bucks. It, it was you know, a very fair deal for everybody, probably paid for that cruise. Mm -hmm. And after he left, I was asking Brad, like, well, you could have you could have easily probably said 250 for the whole lot. And that guy would have been ecstatic. Like, well, I'm not in the business of fleecing little old ladies or little old men. 
Like, I need to leave meat on the bone for us and meat on the bone for you guys. It's all, we're honest, open, and transparent. That's why this place is working. And it's all legal, so <laughs> that's the way to do it. Their taste of the day, also known as the $5 hauler, changes often, but for us, it was a 1980 10-year-old Jim Beam, which we obviously started out with. Next was Golden Wedding from 1959 for just 10 bucks a pour. This was a blended whiskey, which means the majority of it was neutral grain spirits, but the rest was straight bourbon from four to eight years old, and the taste was still very impressive. This trip was all about trying things we had never tasted before, so up next was Captain Harris from 1978, an 86-proof Kentucky bourbon. Their tasting bar was divided up by price, starting with $5 a pour, and was sectioned off roughly like this. But this is going off our memory, so you can't hold them accountable if we're off in a few places. And if you're looking for some extra special pours like Michter's 20 Year, Old Rip, or the 2009 Four Roses Marriage LE bottle, they had them for $100 a pour. Okay, so we just got back from Revival. We totally would have shot this recap outside, except for it was raining and there was like no cover in. My right. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> uh, but wow, what a place. That's sort of been on our bucket list for a while. A while. We didn't buy any bottles there. But we did have some pours, which was really fun. I mean, I think the buying of the bottles there, it is kind of like a museum where and most everything's for sale. So if you're in the market for something in particular, sort of like an art dealer, right? Like you go yes. in kind of knowing what you want or what you have to spend. Yeah. We just went in to explore. So we're, yeah. we weren't really on the buying path. It was more of a we're discovery on phase. On the drinking path. Yeah, on the drinking path. And five dollar Five dollar hauler, what a good deal. For five bucks. For five bucks, if you've never tried a vintage before, like you have to go and stop it. I think they do that daily. Yeah. Um, got to talk to, you know, the staff there, and the owner was at the bar, just like super nice people. They're actually moving. That's a 600 mm. square foot space. They're moving right by our hotel, yeah. Hotel Covington, to a 6,000 square foot space. <laughs> so we're gonna have to come back when they're all set up there yes. and check it out again because wow. Yeah. Next stop was another more drinking than bottle hunting spot at Prohibition Bar. Although they do have some bottles for sale. The self-proclaimed pappiest place on earth has over 2,000 bottles of bourbon and rye whiskey, making it the world's largest collection according to the World Record Academy. We met the owners, Peter and Kim Newberry, which are two of the nicest people you'll ever run into. Pete poured taste after taste for us based strictly on what we told him we liked, and he served it to us blind so we could make up our mind about it before he revealed the bottle, which we love to do. But don't worry, you don't have to do it that way. They'll gladly pour you whatever you like. Sarah started off with a beautiful espresso martini while I was blinded with a vintage pour of virgin bourbon, a 101 proofer from Heaven Hill, and yeah, it's pre-fire. Ooh, look at all those pirate bottles of Elijah Craig barrel proof. You know they had some Booker's Rye. Pete said it was one of the best, if not the best rye in the world, and we gotta agree. They had a flight of four expressions as a special when we were there, four labels that started at Stitzel Weller. These obviously weren't Stitzel Weller bottles, but it's still a cool theme. We were later blinded by a pour of 1792, 225th anniversary, and we'd really forgotten how good this one was. We would have stayed there all night, but we had dinner plans. Day one was a short hunt day, but there's lots more tomorrow. But for now, we got spiffied up and headed out to dinner at the baker's table. We shared the Berry Farms ribeye with fries and started off with some sourdough bread, and that was plenty for us. This place is amazing, and the staff was incredible. We would definitely recommend it for anyone making a stop in Covington. There was a wedding reception going on back at the Hotel Covington, and we had a bird's eye view of it from our room, along with these amazing lights that hung above the courtyard. Day two. Uh, today's gonna be more of a traditional bottle hunt day, where yesterday it was more, we went to places that- Happened to be selling bottles also. Yeah, selling bottles, but yesterday was more about drinking, you know? It was cocktails, more of an experience cocktails, meat yeah. Meat pours. Mm -hmm. We do have like a whiskey blending experience booked later at this place called Wenzel Whiskey. So that should be fun. And then tonight is the Bottled and Bond Festival at Smoke Justice, so. Mm -hmm. I get, it's gonna be a long one. Maybe we'll check out some Main Strauss you know, late night bourbon spots after that. Cause there's I could a couple see that of good happening. ones down there, you know? Yeah. Cause we need more, right? <laughs> no, we just want to show you. We want to show you what's out there. Our thirst cannot be quenched. <laughs> All right, here we go. 
All right, well, before we go any further, we want to hit pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the uh, zip hoodie that I'm wearing and also the shirt that's underneath it. Look and also the hat on your head. Hat on my head. Normally, all of our glassware. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, the pin. Uh, this is glassware. Pin. It's a Glen yeah. Karen pin. There you go, that you're wearing. Uh, bottle cut candles, our new elemental elixir cocktail syrup, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night. Join our community for as little as one buck a month. You get access to exclusive barrel picks. Another round with us after the episode. Discounts on that merch and more. Yeah, as you can see, these names scrolling here. Yeah, look at them go. Look, we look, look them. at them go. Look at them go. Look at them go. Look at how many of them there are. We love them. All right, let's get back to it. Liquor Barn Express was the first stop of day two, and we've seen tasting bars and liquor barns before, but not one like this. They had some serious pours: Old Fitz, King of Kentucky, Woodford Batch Proof, Willet Eight Year, Four Roses Le, Taylor Barrel Proof and all for prices that made sense. We applaud you, Liquor Barn. We saw some K. Luke and McKenna 10, Buffalo Trace for the right price, still limit one per customer though, and Fortuna for a much better price than we have it in Lexington. Saz Rai has really made a return to shelves here lately and we're happy to see it. Here's a new label redesign for Wild Turkey Rare Breed. I feel like Wild Turkey is the most label and bottle redesigning distillery out there. Who's with me? And as usual, I like the old one better. Hey, what up, Snoop? Of liquor stores in a, a pretty compact area. We're so in the we're liquor district. Just walking from Liquor Barn Express right here to Liquor City just to pop in. It's next door. Liquor City had an impressive amount of Bardstown Bourbon Company, but they were $10 higher on their Saz Rye, but $5 better on their McKenna 10. So let's grab one of those because we don't have a 2023 bottle. $17.29 for Rebel 100 is a great price considering it's the same price for the 80 proof version too and a good price on the James E. Pepper cast strength, but let's hold off for now. Also love seeing the cast strength version of Makers 46 showing up more often nowadays. We've heard decent things about this, oh, almost, just can't quite, ugh, almost there. <sighs> ah, this 12 year butcher's bourbon and there's one left, so let's grab it. They also had some more limited things behind the counter, but nothing for a price that we couldn't leave behind. So we picked up a couple of things there, but yeah, I mean, he was super nice, like, I guess because we were customers, we recommended some other stores. That's to us in yeah. That area. That's not often that they're recommending or Usually telling you it's about competition. competition. Just, right. They're just like you're uh, not going to see this anywhere else yeah. for this price. But one and thing that's <laughs> sort of become a constant here is uh, the price of George T. Stag, also nine ninety nine. Nine hundred thousand. Three hundred for Stag, formerly Junior. Mm -hmm. Uh, what'd they say, like uh, 139 for the E.A. Shaler small batch? I think so. The, uh, the Blanton's was 175 One, there. It was 200 yeah. at the store we saw it at yesterday. So I'm not paying it, but no. it's not unheard of. Right. In These in days Kentucky. and days for people yeah. to be charging that. But the hunt, she goes on. Smiling Smoker and Liquor was right across the road, and the name alone is what drew us in. They did have this New Riff Malted Rye six year for 60 bucks, which is great, but we already have one at home. And then, you know, every Pappy Van Winkle except the 23 year, along with some other rare things. But the prices were the reason that they were still sitting on the shelves. Had the best price we've seen on Blanton's at 150, still not gonna buy it. And then also I think they had a pretty decent price on Weller Special Reserve was nine. I mean, it was still, 89. okay, it was still 90. It would never spend that. It's like three, four times what it should cost, but I was at 125 at another store earlier. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. decent. Yeah. It was, I mean, not decent, but you know. Mm, no. Okay, so we're at this place called Liquor City Uncorked, and we have been here before, but this is actually Trauma. one of our, I think this was like back in 2017, we stopped in here. They had a great selection and we wanted to pick up some bottles. So we were like, I was like, yeah, uh, talking to the lady who worked there, yeah, I, I'll take this one. And she was like, you can't have it. And I thought she was joking and I was like, ah, no, really, that's the one I want. And I she was money. like, I was like, I have money, I, have, well, I want that one. She was like, no. And I was like, why is this lady messing with me? And then at some point she goes, what about this are you not understanding? Really hurt my feelings. At some point, she explained that they worked on like a point system, which now is much more commonplace. But in 2017, we didn't have anything like that at home. So yeah. I just was completely unfamiliar. So I thought she was messing with me and she was not nice. I don't know if she still works here. They did have a good selection. It's a nice looking store, but- We're coming for you later. We'll give them another try. As soon as we walked in, bam, 1999 for old granddad 114. That's a deal on a great utility bottle. 
They had a shelf where if you're a points member, you can buy bottles from it or get some pours from their bar, and it's free to sign up for points, you just have to buy something first. We were already getting that OGD 114, so we were in, but it's only if you accumulated 300 points, AKA spent $300, but nothing really grabbed our attention anyways. Lots of store picks here, and the best price on McKenna 10 so far. Dang, we could have saved $5 if we hadn't bought it at the other liquor city. Kind of weird that these stores are about a mile apart and their prices are different. Would you look at this giant bottle of Jefferson's? It's massive. Been seeing more of the Yellowstone LEs out, this one is even 2022. We haven't seen all three mash bills of the Buffalo Trace White Dog anywhere in a while, so that's nice. And here's the selection of bottles you can buy for retail if you've accumulated the proper amount of points. Again, it's one point per dollar spent and everything in the store besides tobacco counts. So if you want this E.H. Taylor single barrel for $57.98, you'll have to have spent $800 previously in the store. Oh, and points don't roll over and they expire after six months, so yeah. That aside, it was the best selection we've seen all day and the staff was very nice. Well, that was just a completely different and delightful experience. I guess they redeemed themselves, yeah. Um, I would say so. I mean, they were everybody in there was super sweet. Signed up for their points. Yeah. We got points because we bought the uh, the OGD 114 for 20 bucks. I 20 mean, bucks. Just a good one to have for $20. Right. Um, and we also got some Scottish beer because we've been looking for it and you can't Irish. really find it. Irish beer? No, Scottish. Oh, Scottish, okay. Bellhaven. Bellhaven, that's right. Um, yeah, we were looking for Innocent Gun, but it doesn't really exist around here, so. Can you all help us find that, please? Well, <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be all right. Stadium liquor was next, and did you know that there's actually Wild Turkey 101 in that bottle? Nah, just kidding. But that bottle is looking a little worse for wear. This place basically had a small museum in it. Look at this stuff. Old Fitz 17, Russell's single rickhouse, and the first bottle of Daniel Weller we've ever set our eyes on. But it goes on. William Heaven Hill, King of Kentucky, Heaven Hill 27 year, vintage bottles, four grain, 18 year marriage, warehouse C. But here's the kicker, they're trophy bottles and they aren't for sale and may be sold in the future at the owner's discretion. Not that we could have afforded any of these, but still, what a tease. Here's an OFC, also not for sale. And then we get into the points territory again. You can buy a bottle of Elmer T. Lee for $39.98, just as it should be, but you do have to have collected 2000 points first. Blanton's is just 800 points, but $72.98 for some reason. Their Buffalo Trace is also limit one per customer per month, which seems odd. 6,000 points and then $150 to get Coy Hill. Overall, a great selection of bottles that a lot of people are looking for, but it does take some work to be able to buy them. If you're just looking for a taste, they do have a tasting bar. Pause to read their selection and prices. We were curious about this barrel bomb. 30 bucks for a cab finish is a good price, and it was distilled in 2017, so a decent age, but ultimately we passed. Has anyone had it? Did we make a mistake? Now onto their store picks, and then their normal stuff where no points were needed. Nothing out of the ordinary though, so we left without anything. More points. Yeah, place. more points. And another one where we can literally walk to the next one. It's right next door. What we're doing right now, yeah. Um, some insane stuff in there. Like, like museum. Things I've never seen before, museum. Never saw that Daniel Weller in person. Never, never laid person. eyes on it. Mm -hmm. points, Manager's so. discretion if sure. they want to sell it. And I'm like, what are you waiting for? Some of the stuff was vintage? I guess they're waiting for their the right discretion. customer <laughs> the right price. I don't know. I guess. I want to be that person. It was a cool shop. I mean, they got a lot of stuff, yeah. but uh, nothing that we could buy because we don't live here, so we don't have the points. There's no, there's no point in it. There's, oh. Covington Tobacco Shop was a short walk away, and here's a Buffalo Trace for less money, and it looks like no limit, so have at it. Oh, and another place with $19.99 on Old Granddad 114. Not a huge allocated selection, and it was limit one per customer, but no points needed. All right, that was a quick stop. We had a second liquor bar in Express, and they did have this Angel's Envy cast strength, which we do enjoy, but 230 is just a budget buster. Quite a bit of blue run here, and not the best price we've seen on McKenna 10 today, but they had it. Time for some lunch, and Molly Malone sounded good. We forgot to get a video of it, but the bangers here were the best we've had since Scotland. Bangers are sausages, if you didn't know. We've got one more stop on our bourbon hunt, but during our weekend in Covington, we also did a blending experience at Winslow Whiskey, attended the Bonded Spirit Bluegrass Festival at Smoke Justice, had an amazing dinner at Kung Food, stopped by Wise Guys Lounge at Goodfellas Pizza, and Old Kentucky Bourbon Bar, and also took a tour at New Rift Distillery. This video would be way too long if we covered all that here, so let us know if you'd like to see us do another video covering everything else. 
Our last stop was the Party Source, which is basically in the parking lot of New Riff. It's also one of the largest liquor stores in the country. By this time, it was Sunday afternoon, and we felt the weekend crowd had picked the shelves over quite a bit, but there was still a lot to see. As you can tell, they have a huge selection. Lots of Texas bourbon and other non-Kentucky offerings, and some bottles we don't see in our area. They had the Black End and Rabbit Hole collaboration, Beanball Bourbon, oh, and the Holiday Toast from Lucky 7? We've been wanting to pick this up for a while, so why not now? Great selection of Hard Truth, Starlight, Frank August, all four of the Pursuit United bottles, this new Remus, and some 2XO. And a good price on the James E. Pepper cast strength. We didn't pick it up at the other store, so let's go ahead and get it here. Though we could have saved a buck at the other store. And finally, the aisle ends. But wait, what's this? Another one? All with their store picks. A quick peek in their glass case of goodies. The normal fare, I guess. All right, before we leave, we've got to check out this new bar inside the store called the Merchants Club. Hey, it's burger night. This speakeasy-esque place is huge with lots of whiskey, beer, and cocktail options. It even has a huge patio and lounge area. If we weren't about to drive home, I would say we stay for some pours and cocktails, but it's time to check out and get on the road. This Northern Kentucky hunt was equal parts pours, cocktails, amazing food and nightlife, as it was bottle hunting. And we're coming home with five bottles totaling $282.94 before tax. What a great weekend. What do you all think of the point system some stores use? Let us know down below. And if you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right here on the screen. There's also other videos down here, and we hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. And until next time, hunt more bourbon. Thank you.